In this video, we will look at a simple but useful example of classification, trying to determine what language a document is in. So we've been looking at supervised learning. And so far, we have had training sets that are made of documents, and then we extract some features from those documents. For example, whether it has the item, the word greatest or not, whether it has the word game or not, whether it has the word lucky or not. These will be features that represent our documents. In supervised learning, we also have labels uh, appended to each training example. So maybe we have the label that it's a positive movie review. And we will try to associate the fact that this has the word greatest with the fact that it has the label positive movie review. Maybe the item has the word game in it, so it is a document about sports. Maybe the item has the word lucky in it, so maybe it's a document that is spam. So we have vectors of features and labels. We could extend this technique so we can identify the language in a text. For example, let's say you get a document in some language. You could design a set of features that is, for example, whether the document has a curly N on it uh, in the document, an N with a curl on top. So if it has it, the document is likely written in Spanish. Maybe the document has the word color with a U in it. If it has that, maybe the document is from British English. So we're going to use conditional probabilities to try to associate some features of the languages with the language that they might be written on or spoken in. We're going to do this with uh, Arabic and its colloquial variants or dialects. So as we saw in the last video, Arabic has diglossia, which means that um, people write in a language called modern standard Arabic. And when they speak, they speak in a number of dialects that are very different from the modern standard and from one another. For example, Tunisian, Egyptian, Sanani, and Jordanian Arabic are all very different amongst themselves. The colloquial dialects are sometimes written, not often, but sometimes people write them on Twitter, on their cell phones, uh, people write poetry in them. So we might want to design a system that can uh, get a document and tell you if it's written in modern standard Arabic, in Tunisian Arabic, in which kind of Arabic. We could try to find features in the document. For example, whether it has, what form does the word table take? What is the form of words like cat? What is the word, the form of words like there isn't? And identify those with specific labels like modern standard Arabic, Moroccan Arabic, Egyptian, Syrian, or, or Iraqi. Let's look at a quick example. For example, if we find this series of glyphs, which is pronounced mafish, if we find it, what is the probability that the document is going to be in Egyptian Arabic? I'll give you a moment to look at the table um, and provide a quick answer, pause the video, and then come back. So as you can see, if a document has the word mafish in it, it is very likely that it will be written in Egyptian Arabic. Why? Because the other dialects have different words for the uh, what means there isn't. For example, in Moroccan, it would be ma kainch. In Syrian, it would be mafi. In modern standard Arabic, it would be la yujadu. So mafish is associated with the document being in Egyptian, highly associated with it. How about this? If you find this sequence of glyphs in a document, is that document going to be written in modern standard Arabic? Is the probability that the document is in modern standard Arabic high given that it has that series of glyphs? 
pause the video and take a look at it. Ish. Um, it is high-ish because that sequence of glyphs pronounced Uridu in modern standard Arabic is present in the text in modern standard Arabic. However, it also occurs in documents that have Iraqi in them, for example, as Arid. So sometimes this sequence is associated with modern standard Arabic, and sometimes this sequence is associated with Iraqi Arabic. So as a feature, it's not very good to distinguish between these two uh, potential labels. How about this sequence? If you have that sequence of glyphs, is that document going to be in modern standard Arabic? Pause the video. If you find that series of glyphs, that's probably not going to tell you decided, uh, decisively if the document is in modern standard Arabic or not. Why? Because other dialects also have this sequence. For example, in, Moroc in modern standard, it's pronounced qitta. But in Moroccan, you have the same sequence, pronounced qitta. And in Egyptian, you have the same frequent, uh, sequence, pronounced otta. This uh, sequence of characters exists in these three forms of Arabic. So it is not very good when it comes to distinguishing between modern standard Arabic, Moroccan, and Egyptian. So the probability that a document is written in modern standard Arabic, given that you find the sequence, is probably low. Let's look at a final one. If you have that sequence, what is the probability that a document is written in Syrian Arabic? Is it high or is it low? Pause the video. Welcome back. The probability is probably very high because the word bisse is only present in Syrian. It's not present in the other ones. And so um, finding this word in a document is going to tell you, oh yeah, this is probably written in Syrian Arabic. So you can see, for example, how a feature, uh, the form of the word cat, can be very informative for the Syrian label, but not very informative for labels like modern standard, Moroccan, or Egyptian. So if you find certain words or forms in a document, you could say that this document is written in one language or the other. So just as a summary, all of the examples we've seen so far are kinds of supervised learning. We have labels, such as whether the review is positive or not, whether the document is about sports or not sports, whether the email is spam or not spam. Here we use labels to identify the languages, modern standard, Moroccan, Egyptian, and so forth. We have some training data, a series of documents, from where we extract features. For example, for the movies, we had positive reviews, like full of zany characters, create a screwball. And from there, we extracted features like, does the document have the word greatest or not? We also had the counter examples, the, uh, the negative label. Unbelievably disappointing, it was pathetic. And from there we had the feature, does the document have the word disappointing or not? Does the document have the word greatest or not for the positives? What we did with the languages is go through the text and try to extract features that would distinguish one type of Arabic from the other. For example, I'm, I love reading and now Hibbul Qira'ata Kathira is written like that in modern standard, but it would be said in Hebnakra Barsha in Tunisian. And so certain words would appear in documents that are in modern standard, and certain words would appear in documents that are Tunisian. In that way, classifying languages is the same as classifying movie reviews. In the next few videos, we're going to look at the, the math and the programming of how to do this. We're going to study two ways of classifying. 
One is to calculate the actual conditional probabilities, and this is going to be called naive based learning. The other way would be to uh, give the features to the computer and tell it to find clusters, but we're going to tell it to find explicit clusters and then try to figure out what is the relationship between the features and the clusters. We're going to call the, this a support vector machine.